It's 8.30. That means it's time for our 8.30 High Beam Tusk Talks today. And we are being joined this morning by Dean Bradley Bielski. And we'll have a conversation with him next here on the B-Team Morning Show. You're listening to Tusk Talks Radio. Stay tuned as we talk about important community topics and what's happening at Kent State Tuscarawas. Learn about the campus and its academic programs, athletics, student activities, performing arts center events, and community involvement. The purpose of Kent State Tuscarawas is to help you find yours. With 27 degree programs, low tuition, and excellent faculty, you can create your own success story at Kent State Tuscarawas. Once again, our guest this morning, Dean Bradley Bielski from Kent State Tuscarawas. Good morning. How are you? Uh, good morning. Uh, it seems to me like uh, today's a unique day for your uh, listening audience because they get two Brads for the price of one. Uh, aren't they lucky? <laughs> <laughs> well, at, at least from your end, they are. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Hey, uh, we are right on top of the fall semester, and I know there's been a lot of anticipation and planning and wondering, and so... As as the dean, you have maybe a better overall view than uh, some of the department people. So what are we looking at coming up here at Kent State Tuscarawas for the fall semester? Well, we're really uh, starting this week, uh, not classes, but uh, today we're going through our uh, packet pickup for students and our virtual orientation, which starts at about 9.30. So much like the semester is going to roll out, we've got some students uh, coming into campus, uh, some students that are receiving their information virtually. Uh, so it's, it's a combination of different styles and different modalities, and that's what we're planning throughout the uh, uh, rest of the semester. And just to reiterate, uh, Brad, that our semester in person really runs through Thanksgiving, and then after that all of our uh, classes go remote. So uh, we're, we've got a pretty aggressive uh, schedule for in-person activities and classes, uh, kind of packed in from the start of classes next Thursday uh, through that Thanksgiving. So a lot of our clinical and laboratory-type experiences and some of our hands-on activities, uh, students are coming in for a lot of those. If it's a straight lecture class, uh, more than likely that's either taught remotely or, or online. So mm-hmm. we've, got a, we've got a combination of things going on, and uh, we're ready and flexible and uh, going to uh, go with the flow, as they say. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we, we're prepared for um, if we have to, and we hope we don't have to have this happen to go fully remote. And we're prepared to, you know, continue on throughout uh, the rest of the semester in a in a hybrid type fashion. Let me congratulate you on uh, having a staff that seems to be really uh, well informed. Uh, the communication I know had to be great uh, because everybody has to have something a little different. You talked about the hands on and the remote and the and different things, but uh, everybody we've talked to seems to uh, really know what the plan is and what's in front of them right now. So uh, that doesn't come by accident, does it? Well, you know, I'm, I'm a big proponent of frequent communication, and uh, uh, we have uh, what I call our cabinet meeting. So it's all of my direct report. Uh, for a long time, we were meeting every day, and then we cut it down to four days a week, and now we're down to three. Uh, so uh, as, as things were rolling out, I felt it important to make sure that uh, everyone who was involved on the academic side of the house, through fundraising, through athletics, through student services, uh, was informed. And I'll, and I'll give a shout-out to the university as well. Um, so the university has done a great job in keeping uh, myself informed. So uh, we have meetings two, three times a week with uh, the provost and the, occasionally the presidents there as well. So uh, we get we get information from Kent State, and uh, they've done a good job at making sure that that we keep informed as well. Very good, very good. Hey, if Kent State they, at the Kent campus decides that they need to close, we've seen Notre Dame, North Carolina, and a few others that said, "Woo, this isn't working well." That doesn't necessarily mean that Kent State Tuscarawas has to uh, close that, correct? Uh, that is correct. So uh, the senior administration at Kent has, has made it pretty clear that. Um, we're going to do this more or less on a campus by campus basis. Now, should you know five or six campuses, uh, uh, you know, be uh, impacted? It's likely the university would make a, you know, kind of a broad sweeping decision. But right now, the way things stand is, uh, if uh, things are fine in Ashtabula and uh, things are not fine at another campus, well, Ashtabula can remain open. Um, and the same thing is true for any of our. Uh, seven either regional campuses or learning centers and, and the Kent campus as well. 
So we're, uh, we believe we're in a good position, Brad. Uh, our engineering technology department, maintenance staff, uh, a committee here on campus that's been devoted towards uh, health and safety uh, has done a great job of putting hand sanitizer stations everywhere. Um, there are plexiglass barriers uh, where there might be interactions between a student and a faculty or staff member. Um, there are uh, enhanced cleaning protocols, wipes, and so forth in the classrooms, and we're asking students to be a willing partner in keeping our, our campus safe. Everyone on campus is required to wear a face mask. So we're doing everything that we can, and, uh, you know, we had a, a long-term plan and still do uh, to become more a residential campus, Fred. Mm -hmm. But uh, right now we're still a, a commuter campus, and so therefore uh, we're not going to have the large number of students, uh, you know, on campus at any one place and any one time. So we feel like we're in a really good position uh, to finish out the semester as planned. Uh, but like I said, we're prepared for anything and everything. Right, right. Our guest is Dean Bradley Bielski of Kent State Tuscarawas. So with anticipation in mind, and, and are there tentative plans? I know uh, sports, some of the fall sports, or, well, all of them, have been uh, pushed back. So when will we see things like um, volleyball, et cetera? And are there plans to uh, maybe have a start date for the Performing Arts Center again? So right right now, um, we, we have plans every, every day that change. It's yeah. our new reality. So uh, I, I am anticipating that... Uh, you know, we will have sports uh, back in the spring, uh, and that would be all of our sports. So fall and spring sports would be playing simultaneously. Uh, we realize that that will be a reduced schedule. So, right. you know, we're running into a lot. Um, you know, we play um, through a multi-state region. You know, we, we go from anywhere from Texas to New York. Um, and we're recognizing that a lot of the other colleges and universities are being very cautious with their travel plans as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, much of our spring season will likely be, uh, you know, located to the Ohio, uh, Kentucky, West Virginia, Pennsylvania type schools, maybe Michigan as well. Right. So we're going to try to um, limit our travel as much as possible and still uh, get in as many games as we can with that. So right. everybody's feeling that right now, uh, doing their own schedule. Um, with the Performing Arts Center, uh, the same thing. Uh, as you probably understand, uh, the governor has, uh, has really still uh, placed a moratorium on performing arts center type venues and concerts and things like that. And, you know, if you're not careful, those events could become super spreader. Right. Uh, so um, it's one of those things that really unfortunate, uh, but uh, we understand uh, why the governor has, has made that decision. Oh, that's uh, if the if, if the governor uh, changes, uh, you know, his mind on that and things look better in the spring, uh, we still have a lot of artists with uh, alternate dates, let's put it that way. So we know that we're not going to have um, big, giant 1,100-seat uh, 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 packed-in uh, concerts and shows in the fall. We may, we may open up for smaller types, depending on, on what the governor's uh, recommendations and rules are. But in the spring semester, some of those that were scheduled for uh, the fall uh, have agreed to come and, and be in the spring. So if things turn around, uh, we could have the busiest spring in the history of the performing arts. <laughs> You're right. We might be having things five nights a week. All right. Yeah, you know, we, we might be uh, the busiest venue in the country. Let's put it that way. So, um, but uh, some of the some of the acts have already said, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're playing a, a dance here. You're you're working with your own uh, venue, and you're working with the agents and the talent companies and so forth as well. So some of them have said it makes more sense for them to push to the next year right so what we've done in those cases is that okay we'll hold a date for fall of 21 so so almost every act that we had scheduled for this year is still committed to coming it's just a matter of when all right well you know what all the messages sound generally positive at kent state test for us wouldn't you agree with that uh, i would and um you know I, a big shout out to our students as well because Ultimately, they're the ones that are the most impacted by this. Um, I, I run enrollment reports every morning, Brad, and uh, right now we're up about 3% from where we were this time last year. So um, our students are committed to our campus and to our faculty and to the experience that they receive, whether that's uh, here on campus or whether it's remote. So a big shout-out to them. Absolutely. And, uh, I'll be addressing the, the new student group uh, probably in about two hours, and 
talk about some of the same things that you and I have, have spoken about this morning. Well, good. I'm glad we gave you a run through. Hey, you sure did. Thank you for that. <laughs> hey, thanks, for, thanks for being on with us this morning. Oh, is, my pleasure. That's, uh, uh, you, 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 Brad, stay safe and stay well. I will. You do the same. That's Dean right. Bradley Bilski from the Tuscarawas uh, campus of Kent State University. He is the dean, and you've been listening to the 830 High Beam Tusk Talks.